Hey guys, Scarzar9 here, and welcome to another thing that I made in Python. Yeah, um, so this is an evolution simulator that I decided to create. Um, it was actually inspired by Kerry KH. Um, if you don't know who he is, uh, there's a link in the description to his channel. I love him so much. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. And um, if you're watching this, Kerry, um, let me just say that Thank you, I guess. Um, I just, I love your videos so much. Um, especially your evolution simulator videos, of course. That's why I made this. Um, so, yeah, you inspired me to make this. And I hope you like it and stuff. <laughs> so, um, anyways. So, as you can see, it's just a dumb screen right now. There's uh, nothing on it, because this is just a start screen where I'm going to explain stuff. So... Basically, this evolution simulator is a bit different from other ones for one reason. Because it actually uses cellular automata, which you probably already knew because it was in the title, but uh, whatever. Um, so instead of generating random creatures and testing them to see how far they get, this one uses uh, random rules from cell cellular automata against a random board that you generated and stays the same throughout the whole simulator and basically it'll just keep going and going and getting better until it gets the best rules possible to light up the most cells so that may not make sense but let's just show you so here's the grid that they'll be working with um the white cells represent the live cells and the nothing represents the dead ones so if i hit next it will uh do one generation of one random creature. It generates four random creatures, and each one has six random uh, rules or genomes that it uses. And um, it will, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just see. Yeah, the first one didn't even do anything. Its rules were so bad that it didn't even survive one generation. So this is the next creature. All right, that one did a bit better. Got five cells. Uh, this one got three. Ooh, that one got a uh, three, four, six. That one got six. Oh, and then one. All right. So you can see the last one there. It got six cells. So it's the leader. And then the one that did the second best uh, was creature one. And the top two creatures, its uh, rules will be, or genomes, they will be passed down to the next generation. So that's, you know, that's how evolution works. The best creatures will uh, evolve and pass down their genomes. And uh, hopefully everyone will get really good. So this is only generation one, so they didn't do that well. If we go over here, you can see the uh, rules that everyone used. So basically, if there's a spot on the grid that um, exactly matches one of these rules, then the middle cell will light up. That's how it works. Or if it's already lit up, it will stay lit up. So if you go to the history, you can see that this is the best uh, set of rules for this generation. So it'll keep track of that. And whenever the... Uh, max number of cells goes up, then uh, a new uh, set of genomes will be added here. So, uh, yeah. So we can go, we can do another generation here. It's the same grid. And you can see a lot of them are acting similar now, and that's because the, you know, the genes got passed down. So, okay, so the top one is now seven cells, so we can go and see that. You can see how they did it. You can see a lot of the rules are the same. But a few of them are new, and that's because there's mutations and stuff. So, uh, yeah. I don't feel like doing full generations now, because you know how it works. We'll just do a quick one. All right. No improvement there. Oh, well, a new creature took the lead, so it probably did it slightly differently. Uh, yeah, I had a few different uh, genes. All right. And there we go. Nine. How did it do it? All right, that's a little weird. And you can see that there are duplicate uh, rules, but that's all right. Uh, that's just how it's meant to be. Because maybe there's one rule that's, like, better than all the rest. And, uh, yeah, you can just fill your whole rules with that or something. I don't know. Uh, I actually banned the blank uh, rule. There's one that was just no cells at all. And that one was a little overpowered, so I got rid of it because it wasn't that interesting. So, uh, yeah. So now you know how it works, I will, um, I will cut to like 100 generations now, and we'll see uh, how much they've improved. 
All right, so I, I went a bit over uh, 100 generations. I went to 111, but uh, you can see they got a bit better, 23. Um, of course, different grids will have different uh, best creatures, so this isn't the best that they've done. I've seen them get to like 60 cells or even like 100 before, but it all depends. So here's what the history looks like. Uh, I'll start from the top. You can see the different genomes that were passed down. So the last breakthrough was at 46, genera generation 46. So it's been a while. I don't know if they're going to improve anymore. But uh, let's see what they look like. We'll do another step-by-step -step generation, as Carrie KH calls it. That's a, a glider. It's pretty cool. All right, so that wasn't the best. They got some pretty bad mutations. All right. Not doing the best. Um... But you get the point. Uh, they have improved a bit. 23. Um, I guess I'll just keep going until they get any more improvements. Alright, so we're at generation 200 here. And uh, they got to 44 cells. It took them 8 iterations to do it. Let's see how they did. Oh, a lot of breakthroughs happened. <laughs> From 46 to 155. And then it must have been... Yeah, there were a lot of new genomes, or rules threw in here. And then they started fine-tuning it. And then at 193, they stopped. So, I guess they can keep making improvements. I just gotta let them go long enough. So, uh, I guess we'll, uh, I'll keep going, see if they make any more improvements. 44, 44, oh, Jesus. That was an improvement. Caught on camera. Quick generation. 79 cells. Holy, how did it do that? It's a lot of these, like, single dot genomes. That one was very chaotic. I want to see that one in a s close up. Oh, that's cool. It kind of, like, it's, like, generating lines. That's kind of interesting. It looks like... It's kind of generating the uh, Sierpinski triangle in a way. If you look at how the lines are expanding, if you were to draw that, it looks like it's drawing like a Sierpinski triangle or something. Um, huh. That's interesting. Yeah, it seems like that's a pretty common uh, rule. Oh, that one just glided up. <laughs> so yeah, 79. That is a really big improvement. Jeez. So, uh, yeah, I guess there's still improvements to be made. So it's been over a hundred generations since the uh, last breakthrough it was at 203. It's at a uh, 304 now, so I don't think they're going to be getting much better. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's it, I guess, uh, for my evolution simulator. You can see the history of the creatures getting better and better. So I would say that this is probably not as good as Kerry KH's Evolution Simulator, but I don't think anything's better than that. His is just so amazing, but I think I did a pretty good job on mine. Uh, I think it's a bit different. I've never seen an Evolution Simulator with uh, cell cellular automata before, so I don't know. I think it's a pretty neat idea. Uh, again, there'll be a download link in the description for this. It'll be in uh, just a Python file this time, so if you don't have Python or Pygame installed on your computer, you won't be able to run it. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, duh, I can't really do anything about that. And I also have a link to Kerry KH's channel in the description, like I said earlier. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you'd have fun with this. Uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.